गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी सो इन द फर्स्ट लेक्चर व्हिच वाज इन कन्वोकेशन हॉल वी स्टार्टेड विथ प्रूफ एडिटिंग इंटेंशनली बिकॉज इट्स नॉट एन ऑब्वियस टॉपिक प्रूफ एडिटिंग नो बडी थिंक्स इज अ सीरियस मॅटर सो वी हॅव स्पेंड फोर सेशन्स ऑन प्रूफ रिडिंग सो फार अँड बाय नाव विथ सेरीज ऑफ एक्झरसाइजेस वी हॅव स्टार्टेड पिकिंग अप द स्किल्स इट विल टेक टाइम to really build up that's why we have started early and public speaking will start today so first we'll see what are the communication skills which we are trying to learn there are some skills <coughs> which we get naturally or we can just pick up for example ordinary speech <coughs> we saw that between the age of 1 and 3 <coughs> every child learns to speak its mother tongue without any external aids without any exams without any lecture so this we are born born to learn speech and we don't have to do any special effort for that as against these some skills have to be acquired they cannot be picked up naturally you need external guidance for that and you have to use specific techniques so these skills we have to learn and we saw that writing is one such skill so writing is not just speech converted into text <coughs> writing is a separate skill by itself if you just take conversation or speech and transcribe it <coughs> into script and read it back you will find that it is terrible written language <coughs> is different from spoken language and we have to specifically learn this and as we have seen while ordinary speech <coughs> is not prone to errors we hardly make any mistakes while speaking writing is prone to errors <coughs> and which can escape our attention so with series of exercises and examples we have seen that we cannot make out mistakes in our own writing not only that we cannot even make out mistakes in other people's writing unless we develop a special skill and special vision for that so that's why we covered proof editing now in speech for ordinary conversation we don't need any training but for public speaking
we do need trading training <coughs> and you are all aware of this many of you are aware that to become a public speaker <coughs> you need special training and by yourself left to yourself it's difficult to manage so normally public speaking is considered as a skill <coughs> so skill implies that there is some element of art in it and you need some natural flair for it <coughs> so the approach we are taking is that like proof editing is also a skill <coughs> but we have converted into a technique we saw that there are specific techniques with which everybody can pick up proof reading the ultimate levels of that might require some innate ability but even without that special ability by using those techniques <coughs> everybody can improve proofreading similarly for public speaking we are considering this as a technique not as a skill if you use the technique and practice your skill will automatically develop so now you can see that what we are learning is we have learned proof editing today we'll start with public speaking and next to this will be presentation because a presentation will involve your writing as well as it will involve speaking it will involve other media like <coughs> visible media etc so after we have covered public speaking then we will go to presentation presentation <coughs> is also a technique there are many things which are rule based and if you follow those rules you will always achieve a certain amount of mastery after that you have to practice so in public speaking what is the hurdle that you people find why is it different from conversation since you can talk with your friends you can talk with a small class but when you stand in front of a lot of people and isolated on a stage like this <coughs> what is it that affects you or why do you find it difficult yes yes what is said is one of the factors but one major factor <coughs> which is not obvious in all this discussion of technique is fear <coughs> what really affects us we have our script we know our subject we know what to speak we know the audience but when we stand in front of a lot of people many people get fear this called stage fright and because of this fear we are unable to perform there is a basic how many of you have fear of public speaking the many probably more than 50% have fear of public speaking so unless we are able to overcome this fear <coughs> no matter how good you prepare your speech or how well you know your subject <coughs> you will be unable to perform so the first thing we are going to learn is what is this fear and whether we can overcome it so unless we overcome it we are not going to proceed
So why is this fear there? Firstly, this fear is natural. You are not alone as you have seen that majority of students, even <coughs> students who are highly educated as you are, still have this fear. So it is independent of your intelligence, it is independent of your other training. <coughs> Sometimes you will find that small children can come in front of a class and speak, while highly educated people will also be unable to <coughs> speak in front of a class. So that means we have to use some specific techniques to overcome this fear. It, it has nothing to do with our other competence or our other intelligence or our other education. So why is this fear there? This fear is a not a rational response. Fear is generally tends to be irrational and fear of public speaking is irrational. Because suppose you fail, suppose you make a mistake, nobody is going to really punish you. The audience is actually sympathetic to you normally. So then what is there to fear? So this is a natural re physiological response that when you have to deliver something, the body gears up its resources. So your heartbeat increases, <coughs> your breathing becomes shallow, you might sweat. In the ultimate case, you might feel that you are going to faint. Though there are actually very few examples of people standing in front of an audience and fainting, but you might feel that you are going to faint. If you do not physically faint, you might faint mentally. What does that mean? You might stand there, but you might blank out. You will forget what you are going to speak, you will lose all track and you will stand there dumbfounded. So as soon as you decide to come in front of an audience, fear is an immediate response, <coughs> it is like transient response you can say. And unless you take control of that, you are lost. So how to take control of this? Firstly, this response is transient means it is actually short lived. If you pass through that critical period, the fear will subside, you will get back your senses, you will get control of yourself and then you can take charge. So we have to pass through this initial difficult period. For that we have to use some techniques, there is no amount of counselling which will help. No amount of telling you that it is actually irrational to fear. So we have to bypass this fear and once we get through that, then we can deliver. So firstly, if you have fear, you are not alone. The audience is made of people like you. If any of them stand up in front of the class, they will also have the same fear. So they have empathy for you. They understand that if you are not an accomplished speaker, you are likely to have fear. Secondly, even if you have fear, <coughs> the audience does not actually know how much fear you have. So first technique is you do not display your fear and do not mention that I am not accustomed to public speaking, that is a giveaway, because that then the audience will feel that you are going to fail. So even if you have fear, do not disclose it, till you overcome it. First technique is do not disclose your fear, unless you have some visible symptoms like trembling or something, audience will not make out. Next is, when you have fear, you lose your confidence. Uh, even if you have prepared everything, you know your subject, but you lose confidence, you start feeling that you might fail. Now if you start feeling that you are going to fail, this is a self-fulfilling prophecy, you will actually fail. 
this is a bad power of negative thinking. So, do not lose your confidence. On the other hand, if you pretend that you are confident, even if you are not, you will start feeling confident, this power of positive thinking. So, you say to yourself that I am going to succeed, <coughs> I am going to overcome my fear and I am going to deliver. So, you act confident, then you will actually become confident and this is a positive feedback loop. Once you start feeling confident, you will actually become confident. However, there are still some physiological responses which you have to deal with. So, to overcome fear, firstly, you have to relax. So, if you have the option of sleeping down or something, then relaxation is easy. But here you cannot even sit down, you have to stand exposed in front of the audience. So, while in such a position, how to relax? So, there are techniques where while standing you can relax. One technique is that when you stand, you tighten your fist for 3 to 5 seconds. So, you count 1, 2, 3, 4. Meanwhile, you hold your breath. <coughs> These two things will relieve the fear tension. So, you do this three times. Of course, you do not tell the audience that I am going to relax now. You do it discreetly so, while walking or while walking up to the stage, you manage to do this. So, let us practice this. So, we will all stand up, all stand up and try this out. So, we are going to do you imagine that you are in front of a class. So, tighten your fist, both both fists, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, one cycle is over, we will do it three times. Tighten your fist, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Third cycle, tighten your fists, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Sit down. Thank you. Now, just now you may not realize, but when you actually practice this in front of an audience, you will find that your fear will come down. These are all incremental techniques. When you use all of them together, your fear will substantially come down till you are able to manage. Next is whether you wish it or not, you will have kind of stomach upset. This is called butterflies in the stomach. Have you experienced this? Now, how many have experienced this? So, many people have experienced this and this is an automatic response. No matter how consciously you think that this is irrational, it is going to happen. So, butterflies in the stomach is normal. They should fly in formation. This is by Walter Krumke. So, instead of flying randomly in your stomach, if they fly like a flock of birds, that means if you take control of this extra energy, then it will actually help you. This tension, you turn it around and make it your friend instead of being your enemy.
Next, despite this, many people have fear of coming in front of an audience. So, they should practice just coming in front of an audience, but not speaking. So, your visual fear of seeing the audience will reduce. So, how can you do it? How do you take an opportunity where you come in front of an audience, perform something, but you do not have to speak? Anybody has any idea? One simple technique is you get involved in music. If you participate in music, suppose there is a group song or something, where your voice is not exposed, whether you, as long as you move your lips, you are okay. And since there are other people standing, they will do the singing. So, this is the simplest that you participate in a group singing. Next is, if you know to play any instrument, even a, some simple instrument like a triangle, you get involved in some music group, so that you will know how to come in front of an audience. If you can actually play some instrument, nothing like it. So, when we were freshies, our hostel had only 14 freshies out of 288. So, we were a very small batch and we had the freshers night. And you know freshers night is has a hostile audience, though it is friendly, it is hostile. And you are going to get booed no matter what you do. So, luckily we had one friend who took charge, he organized what everybody will do. Now, I had a room neighbor who was my friend, who was very, very bright, but he said, I cannot perform anything, I have never been in front of a class. And it is impossible, but even the friendly seniors told him that there are only 14 of you, you are countable, your head is marked, you better come in front of the audience and perform. So, then we suggested to him, do you know Janaganamana? He said yes. So, come in front of the audience and sing Janaganamana. He did that without fearing. So, you know the power of music. What did I do? Because I had a stage fright. I played the harmonium because I am a <coughs> bit of a musician. So, I did not have a fear. So, music is one way of overcoming your fear that in your hostel or whatever you participate in music. That is one way of overcoming fear. Why does it happen? Why music allows you to overcome your fear? Why speech does not? Because music affects your emotions and music generally gives rise to positive emotions. So, since the brain has a fixed capacity, if you introduce positive emotions, the negative emotions go down on the balance. So, you do not say, I do not want negative emotions, because then you will be concentrating on that. But instead, you introduce positive emotions, the negative emotions will be all crowded out. That is why music is a powerful way of taking control of your emotions and overcoming your fear. Additionally, you take part in group discussions and small audiences where you do not have fear and practice. Even in a group discussion, you stand up in front of others, facing others and do your delivery. Slowly, you can speak in front of larger audiences and then you can speak in front of any large audience, regardless of its size. So, this was the first part
that is preparation to speak. So, using all these techniques, we assume that we have overcome our fear and your name is announced that you are going to speak, you are sitting somewhere. So, now everybody is looking at you. So, many people get excited and they start running to the stage and then they can even fumble while climbing on the stage or make some mistake. If they have papers in hand, they might fall. So, as soon as your name is announced, <coughs> you are virtually on the stage, even if you are not physically there and you are in control. So, you do not have to rush to the stage. The audience has to wait for you, because now you are the master. The control has been handed over to you. So, you walk slowly, while walking you can do this exercise, where nobody will notice <coughs> and you walk up to the stage. You need at least 10, 20 seconds to overcome this initial fear. <coughs> so, you have to somehow buy time for yourself. So, you cannot say that I need 20 seconds before I start, then it will become obvious. So, you have to do it discreetly without other people realizing that you are buying time. One advantage is just as you require startup period, the audience also does. Whatever the audience was listening to previously, it has to shut it out of its mind and it has to get prepared to face you and your topic. So, the audience also needs maybe 10 seconds to change over. It is not that one speaker stops and immediately the next speaker starts, even if the speaker is next to him. You always need time. In a movie, you must have seen that there is one shot and then there is the next shot. Now, they, they do not just stop the shot and start the next one on the next frame. They will have a, some technique for changing over, uh, what is called fade in, fade out that this will slowly become dim and the other shot will come or this will slide slowly or there will be something in between, because the audience takes time to adjust to a new topic. So, you need not worry that audience is not expecting you to start off immediately. So, you walk up to the stage, you still need some time to relax. Now, how do you buy time? You adjust things on the stage, you adjust the mic, you call the mic operator and ask him to adjust for you, <coughs> test it etcetera. Nowadays, there are more gadgets being used and these gadgets <coughs> are prone to failures. So, if you really want to buy time, you restart your laptop with control alt delete. And everybody expects that whenever a new speaker comes, something funny happens on the screen, it will say no signal or uh, source not found and all kinds of things. You will have to navigate through the menu till you reach your intended file, etcetera. So, people do not feel that you are doing it intentionally, because even if you do not want this happens, but if you really want to buy time, you can do this intentionally you can remove the VGA connection and put it back and the projector will again start looking for this, it has to go through a ritual till it finds your source and says. So, these gadgets help you to overcome your fear. So, we have covered preparation now you are ready to speak. I will rub this out.
So, next is the actual procedure, this is part 2. First was preparation. So, first part of procedure is that if your speech is scheduled, you start preparation as early as possible, do not wait till the last moment. Like you can start several days in advance that how you will deliver this, even if it is a short speech, you prepare early, the earlier you prepare, better finish it will have, because you will have a time to look at it again. I know this is against IIT style when you do everything the previous night, but if you do it earlier and again have a look on successive days like we said for proofreading that you sleep over it and next day you see. <coughs> Similarly for this you plan it early, the initial planning does not really take time, you do not have to write out your whole speech. So, prepare early and your speech must have three identifiable elements. Beginning, middle and end. So, you must divide your speech into at least three parts, because unless you plan like this, you will miss something or you might say in the beginning what was your conclusion or other way around that in the end you will realize that you should have introduced some concept which you forgot to do in the beginning. So, you plan in which sequence, because in speech we, people cannot go back and refer. In writing they can go back and refer, in speech they cannot, it flows one way. So, this should be in a logical sequence. It should not be like a movie with lot of flashbacks or flashbacks within flashbacks, you do, you do not know where you are and in which time you are. A technical speech should not put the audience into puzzle. You should follow a logical sequence, that way the audience will follow you and you will follow yourself. When you are speaking, if you are speaking in a logical sequence, you would not lose thread. Next, the present fashion is to use PowerPoint. So, uh, people can their presentation or even speech into multiple PowerPoint slides. And then they like Dr. Patak explained that they present the slide and start reading out. So, this we will be really covering in presentation techniques, but we can say in advance that the PowerPoint should be as simple as possible. Not more than 15 words per slide. You will find that people fill PowerPoint slides with running text and audience is busy reading it on the screen or worse they will give printouts or they will put it on the web. Then people are going through their laptops, they are not paying attention to the speaker. So, PowerPoint will be used only where speech will not work. If there is something which you cannot explain by speaking, then you use a PowerPoint. 
if you can explain it through speech or by writing on the board do not use powerpoint. So, powerpoint was originally meant for graphs and charts. because you cannot explain these in speech, <coughs> they are better represented visually. And the origin of this was there was a program called Harvard graphics, <coughs> which is very old. So, you may not have heard it. Harvard graphics first provided graphs and charts on a computer. Microsoft windows picked it up and made it easy. So, that even the dumbest people can construct slides and it has become very tempting now. But you will find that what most people land up doing is they first write the text, then they slice it up so that it fits into like you take a chocolate and cut it into many pieces and they will put it up into 20 powerpoint slides. That is not what powerpoint was meant to be, it was only meant for charts and graphs, statistics visuals <coughs> etcetera, which you cannot otherwise explain. So, it is meant for pictures not for text. Then the next is what should you do your with your speech? Do you spe speak impromptu that is without any prompting? I am using this as a prompting, I have one page here. Do you memorize the speech completely like children do and they will stand in front of a class and deliver a continuous speech. Unfortunately, even if you have done, done it as a child, at your age you cannot do it. Say after the age of 15, you cannot memorize text and deliver it. In Dale Carnegie's public speaking book, he has given an example of a insurance salesman, there was a salesman's conference and there was a star salesman that he had the highest sale and he was called in front of the conference. He had mugged up his total speech. So, he started in part of the my, my part of the business I have and he blanked out. But he picked up courage, he walked back two steps, again started in my part of the business, <coughs> I have found, again he blanked out. So, again he walked back two steps, before this happened third time, let us see what the situation was. This was an open stage and it had no wall behind. So, the third time he walked back, he fell down. So, the audience thought this was some kind of a practical joke, they did not realize what tragedy he was in, but this is what happens when you try to memorize your speech. It is almost guaranteed that at some point in the speech you will blank out and then you cannot pick up the thread. So, do not memorize your speech. At the other end should you write out the whole speech, that is also ruled out because any written out speech <coughs> sounds artificial, it is only meant for high dignitaries like president etcetera, who cannot afford to make a mistake. So, they write out their speeches, <coughs> but at our level if we try this people will get fed up. So, you can neither write out your speech completely nor can you memorize completely. So, how do you manage if you are speaking for 5 minutes it is ok. But if you are speaking for a long time like in a class, then you cannot manage easily unless you have practiced it many times. Then what you do? You use what are called cue cards. These are roughly 100 by 150 mm. 
So you write your points, you only take out the points for the speech. You write them on one side of the card. Back is not to be used like in manuscript. You number them because they might get shuffled like cards. And write in big font, only a few words per card. Why this size? There is a size which you can hold at arm's length and just take a peek while speaking. So, you should use cue cards and this should not contain full sentences or full paragraph, it should only contain the main points. And if you know your subject, from those points you should be able to expand. It will sound natural and you won't get lost. Because Q to Q, you have to only expand Q to Q. You don't have to memorize anything long. So, final thing is performance. Some of the things we have already covered in preparation that you buy time, you drink water, adjust the mic. When you start speaking, you do not look at infinity or somewhere else look at the audience, make eye contact with the audience. So, when you start roughly 5 seconds you should look in one direction, but do not stare, audience does not like to be stared and do not keep looking in only one direction. You shift your gaze and you pan the audience, so that the whole audience feels that you are addressing all of it and not just people in front of you. So, you move your gaze and everybody should feel that you are actually talking to that person. This is important because otherwise they are not going to pay attention to you. And if they do not pay attention, they are not going to understand. So, while starting after making eye contact, do not start right away at full speed. Like you start a vehicle in say first gear, then second gear, etcetera. You start at slow speed. The audience also takes time to build up tempo, so do not start right away. Start at slow speed and start in a low pitch, do not start in a high pitch. If you start in a high pitch, people will get fed up. If you expect people to listen to you, you should start at low pitch, then slowly you can build up the pitch and then you can increase the tempo. And while speaking, use what is called abdominal voice, that you do not do shallow breathing, you do abdominal breathing and abdominal voice is deeper and more penetrating like all announcers have, it is a deep voice and it gives you better breath control. So, use a deep voice, the overall tempo of your speech is not the same as your conversation tempo. In conversation, we tend to speak fast because our audience is limited and the audience is close to you. But in public speaking, the audience is far away from you. So, for the audience to focus, your delivery must be slow. So, what will sound slow to you yourself is actually correct speed for the audience. So, you slow down compared to what you would like to and then the audience will follow. And instead of speaking out continuous sentences like a train going fast, you use pauses 
you stress important word. The pauses allow the audience to assimilate what they have heard before and they are ready for the next bit. Otherwise, there is buffer overrun error. You start speaking continuously, the audience will give up because they will have a backlog of understanding. Then they can't understand what is coming next. You allow time for them to swallow. Then compared to normal speech, the articulation that is the way you pronounce things should be more artificial. <coughs> you need not have an accent, but in normal speech even if you speak indistinctly the people can make out. Here the audience cannot make out. So, you should speak distinctly, you should stress the syllables as required, so that the audience understand. It is more artificial than just plain speaking, stage speaking is more artificial. Then do not stand up in one place like Janaganamana and deliver your speech, that will appear unnatural. So, firstly you should move around on the space permitted, so that you are in front of different parts of the audience and move your hands. When the audience is very close, it can see your facial expression. When the audience is further, it can only hear your voice and it can see your gesture. <coughs> so, move your full hands. Not only this, but right from this, you move your full arm that will also make you free, so that your expression will be natural and the audience will remain interested. But do not use artificial gestures, it should look natural. Many times in when they teach drama and there is a long monologue, people find that they have an extra pair of hands, they do not know what to do with their hands. You might find the same unless you use gestures. <coughs> so, be natural and you will communicate with the audience. Then before ending the session, take questions. So, now we will take questions. Anybody has doubts about what we covered? How will you utilize this knowledge? Miss presentation using media. No, this for speaking or for presentation using media. So that will. Next session, when we will cover presentation with media, just now we are not using any media whatsoever, we are just using blackboard, <coughs> nothing more. When we discuss media, then we will see how to integrate the media, how much weightage to give to each and you will find that there are many surprises. So, I think we will disperse here. Now, I will just tell you what is we are going to do next in next session. There will be one more one more session for presentation, presentation techniques. Meanwhile, have you heard of TED talks? How many have you have heard? The remaining people can go to the web and find out what are TED talks. What you are going to do? The, we will give the details next time, but you can start working on that. Okay. Whatever we discussed, it is on a handout and she is distributing. We did not want you to waste your time in taking notes, otherwise you would have lost <coughs> concentration. So, almost everything that we discussed is in this note. 
so you go to ted talks the advantage is their package talks on important topics and you try to identify topic which interests you individually so the exercise we will be telling you is you listen to a you choose a topic listen to the ted talk so this will test your listening skills then you make notes and make a one page presentation so we'll discuss the details next time okay thanks everybody